to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Joel Elson here. Today is Thursday, December the 21st, 2017, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. And uh, Joel, it's good to have you back for another week. I- I'm so glad that you've been able to come back at all. To have you back once a week has been just terrific. Well, Walt, it's been something that, that you know, when I had my time off and I was uh, dealing with life, uh, it, it, you know, it was great stuff. But I really missed uh, equally to the show and our, our listeners. But for some reason, the, the, the boost it gives me just doing the show, uh, it, it's, it's my version of just sort of therapy in a sense. I love it. it it's an uplifting moment in my my week, and uh, so I really did miss it. So it's, it's great to be back, and and being connected with you is always a positive. So I'm, I'm appreciative for the whole concept. Well, I'm I'm just smiling hearing you say that. That's terrific. <laughs> and also, <laughs> you, you make a good point. I mean, you're a therapist, and even therapists need little little loving care occasionally. So giving yourself some loving care by doing something fun—that's a good idea. <laughs> well, and, and that's you know with, when you know the concept of life coaching, you know you're 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 really focused on now and forward, not now and backwards. And uh, uh, it, so so I have in my life, I, I'm, I'm you know daily working with other people. I do great self care. I'm in the gym every day. I, I eat well nutritionally, but you know focusing on on being able to look at the positives and and really see how. Just mainly law of attraction stuff is, is how exciting that is. It, it reinforces my commitment to what I bring to my patients, and I have uh, have always used it. Uh, over the last several years, I've used it in, in working with addiction mainly, uh, but but any any type of uh, uh, environment law of attraction works well in. And and I also use a form of uh, a treatment called solution focused therapy, where instead of Instead of so much, you know, digging up why, 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 it's, it's about right now. And I know we wanted uh, uh, to talk about the holidays and, and, and you know, where we're at. Uh, I'm finding it difficult. I, I often find it difficult for people in the holidays, during the holidays, to deal with all the stuff of the holidays. And the law of attraction is a great tool for that. Yeah, that's true. And stress during the holidays is that that's the one time that the the word comes up more than any other during the year, and and for good reason because there are a lot of stressful aspects of the holidays for many many people. But I I agree. I especially think that you probably see a lot of it in your practice, and and so that makes you a perfect expert to start sharing. Well, here's what we can do about it. <laughs> well, and that and you know what what normally happens during the holidays is is first of all. There's almost always unreal expectations of what is supposed to happen, mm. and and you know the the concepts that's delivered to us on TV and 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 over the years of of okay here's the holiday season where the loving family and their shirts and ties and coats sit down at dinner and they they they're lo- it, it's just this image that's taking place and the reality is I don't know many actually many families that do it that way but that when you aren't experiencing the joy. Uh, and, and you're looking to the outside resources or you're looking for other people or other places or other things to give you that internal fulfillment, uh, it, it, it really creates a series of expectations that are impossible to meet, which creates a feeling of lack. I'm lacking what other people are having, and then we get into the stress of things, and I'm, I'm worried about this or I'm worried about getting the right present for this person. When in reality, the holidays, if, if, they're, if they need to have any label different than a normal day, which I personally don't think they do, but if, they, if we do have that label separate, it should be about love, support, excitement, positivity. You know, the, I look at it, the, it, the year's coming to an end. This has been an incredible year uh, for me and my family, and, and I know that they, I'm anticipating next year to even be more incredible. Uh, with that, that's sort of how I'm viewing the holidays and, and helping people deal with those unreal expectations or actually look to fulfill that, that, that unintentional lacking feeling that, uh, they, they, the, by measuring the, the bar by other families is really an important factor because when you break it down, you know, a lot of my, a lot of my clients are, are young males, they're college age. And um, they, they've been doing pretty well. They're off at school, and all of a sudden, they're put back into the family structure. Uh, that you know, they come home for the holidays. A lot of them are home for upwards of a month between, you know, between semesters. So, well, these these young people are are struck back. They they're, they're reverted back to their childhood and expectations in a lot of ways, and that creates a lot of different 
dynamics and a lot of stress and both on the parents and both on the child or young man, young woman at this point. And, and so you, you see, I have sort of a microscopic view of, of, wow, I mean, it's so clear to me because I'm not living among it, but stress during the holidays is, is really a, a, it really is a factor that's often missed. They, a lot of people talk about depression during the holidays, but the stress leading up to the depressive thoughts is really the underlying cause, in my opinion. That's an interesting observation. In fact, you're reminding me of when I was in college many years ago, more years ago than I care to count. <laughs> and <laughs> yes. coming home from, from college, you're right. I mean, it, it's almost a bigger transition going back home for the holidays than it is to go into college in the first place. I mean, that transition is a big transition, going into school for the first place uh, on a campus away from home with new people that you've never met before and new professors and new standards and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of uh, stuff that goes on there. But the coming home is almost worse, <laughs> which is a strange thing to say. I mean... Well, it may not be a strange thing to say in some people's lives, if, depending on what kind of a home life they had, but I had a pretty good home life, and, and for me to come home and experience that craziness of being home and, like like you said, kind of reverting to childhood, it's almost it, it's almost like there's an unintentional demeaning going on there, which is strange. It really is, and, and, and again, it's about the expectations on both sides. You know, but if you look at it in, in, in my position uh, of, as a life coach and therapist, is to look at it from both sides. And when when somebody is discussing, okay, I'm going back home with my parents. They they have these unrealistic expectations. I've been taking care of myself at college. Uh, you know, our parties don't start till 11 p.m. and my curfew now is 11 p.m. Uh, and and you you start to see all. And the parents are like, I. I he needs to respect me, needs to be home in time, he needs to do this. So that it, it's this push-pull of expectations. And part of the law of attraction for me has been adjusting my expectations to the things that I'm in control of. The, the, the idea that if I expect Walt to behave in a certain way and Walt doesn't behave in that way, I'm going to be disappointed and that's going to create stress in my life and, and an expectation that wasn't met. Whereas I focus on what Joel is responsible for and where my energies are, then, then I'm able to do that, you know, in, in, a, in a different way without stress because I'm in charge of the scenario there. I can take action to make that work. And so when I'm working with these the families, it, it's a really, usually it's that, for, just like you described, it's that, you know, the freshman leave for college, huge adjustment at college, they come home. It's usually that first Christmas break that is the worst because, they, they've changed roles, and then they're trying to – mom unintentionally is trying to treat them like they're 12 because that's their baby, no matter how old they are, <laughs> no matter how much facial hair they have. They're still 12. Uh, and, and then you have you know, the dad who, I am the alpha male of the house, and you will do this. And then – so all of this dynamic tries to re restart itself, and there's a stress involved with that. So you know, the, more, you know one of the key factors – is stepping back and, and, and I work with my young people explaining, you know, what we have to do is take a deep breath and realize you are back in your parents' environment. And whether you agree with or disagree with it, they're the ones who live there and that is their that is their home. That is where they make things happen. And you you have to respect that. Very important. And 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 what you know you start with that and then, then with the parents you also have to explain to them that they cannot possibly demand their children to behave the way their children did when they were living in high school. They're in high school. And so you start working on, on everybody's expectations, and once they're lowered, things work out in a really good way. You know, as you're talking about that, I'm, I'm reminded of something you and I discussed a week or two ago. Um, I, I mentioned how I had started to read some of the Abraham Hicks books that I hadn't read before. And one of them is called The Law of Attraction. And in that book, they actually lay out three laws. The first one being Law of Attraction. The second one being, which, uh, the Law of Attraction being that which is like unto itself is drawn. The second one being the science of deliberate creation. That's actually presented as a law. And that's where we're applying our thoughts to you know what, what we think about, right. what we feel about, what we attract. And then the third law is the one that seems to apply here very much. They call it the art of allowing, which is really... I allow that I and accept that I am who I am, and I allow and accept that other people are who they are, and it, it's not like I can control them or that they can control me. And anytime we try, we're going to you know get ourselves into trouble. 
And boy, that's exactly what you're describing. You're describing situations where people are, are expecting other people to behave in a certain way in order to make themselves happy. In fact, I'm reminded of another Abraham Hicks thing where um, Abraham at one point says something to the effect of, have you ever noticed how many times and how many ways there are certain people who want you to stand on your head and no number of times that you stand on your head is good enough? <laughs> yeah. And that's a good way yeah, of describing exactly. it, you know? <laughs> Well, and you know, the, when when we're looking at how all of this, uh, how how does the law of attraction affect affect this? And when you walk into another scenario that takes place, is when you walk into a situation expecting a confrontation or an unrealistic uh, uh, expectation on the other person's part, then then you're inviting that to happen. It, it's just. Just like you're saying, my mom is going to be unreasonable when I get home, so I'm going to do that. Or work's going to be unreasonable. I have to get my my shopping done for my children, and work isn't letting me do this. Or whatever the whatever is put in front of you during this period of time is escalated under the guise of we must meet this high expectation of this holiday. And if you'll allow me, you'll see the connection here in a second. One of the things and I work with so many young people is why I use such references. But one of the things that I noticed over the years in working with, especially my high school students is the prom is almost always a disaster on some level because great expectations of the prom is going to be great. And we're, we're going to buy a nice dress. We're going to look good. And so most traumas I deal with involving social aspects of high school involve the prom. The interesting thing is, Almost everyone reports the week before the prom was much more fun. It was, <laughs> you know, it was because there was no expectations attached to it. So I, I tend to think that that expectations, you know, while we talk about, you know, expect great things in your life and the law of attractions, but we almost use the law of attraction in a reverse way during the holidays of expecting a level of something or behavior from other people or other entities that are almost never going to be fulfilled. So we set ourselves up and, and that that's where that stress level comes in because if this only would have unfolded the way I wanted to unfold, this would have been the perfect holiday. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know what that means, you know, it, it, but it's, and, and most people don't, that's the, that's the other part. Most people set an expectation that they don't have any clear the law of attractions and all it's picking up on is the emotion of the stress of this has to be perfect. That's what it's picking up on. It's not picking up. I want to have a loving supportive holiday. It's picking up on the stress of all of that. Mm. And that's what it's delivering back to us. Plus when you add in the fact that essentially most of our lives, most of us spend a large portion of our conversational time talking about the stuff that isn't working right. Or the stuff that doesn't feel good, or, or you know, making fun of it, being sarcastic about it, um, ragging on somebody else. I mean, there's just so much of that that goes on. So when the holidays come along, it's not really a shock when we continue to do the same kinds of behaviors. You don't see a whole lot of people who are approaching the holidays in a similar way that they would approach the rest of their lives, where they're trying to find good in everything. They're trying to always find the silver lining in the gray cloud. They're always trying to find ways to make themselves happy. They're not concerned with trying to manipulate other people to make them happy for them. And, you know, all those kinds of behaviors. We shouldn't be shocked that it all doesn't change when the holidays come. The holidays don't magically make all that stuff go away. Well, the, that's the, the holidays can either, and, and this is the way our, our society works, the holidays can focus or sort of put a microscope on your life because of, you know, you're, you're around other people, you have certain, you know, how are things going? And you, you're, you're seeing people you, you maybe haven't seen all year. I have this one young man. He, he's a great young man doing really well in, in his life coaching with me and coming a long way, but he has, he has family members coming from the West coast to visit here. Well, he's already told me, about the expectations of how his uncle is going to annoy him. Okay. His uncle is very bossy. His uncle uh, uh, demeans him. His uncle is an old Marine that thinks he's a fat, lazy kid, and he's already dreading all of that. 
And and I said, well, I said, so you're going to suffer at least several times before he, while he's here. You're going to you're going to suffer in anticipation of him being here every day, and then you're going to suffer while he's here, or you can change the narrative of how you're viewing that. And and so we're working on him seeing it differently, and and not first of all not giving his uncle the power to make him feel a certain way, but also understanding that it it has almost no other outcome because he's manifesting or bringing about that is who's going to appear. I said, you know, how do you normally meet your uncle? He said, well, I normally try to hide from him until he tracks me down. And then he tells me, you know, what I'm doing wrong. I said, why don't you get a, in front of that? You shake his hand. He walks in the door, say, can I get your bag for you? And, and tell him to stop because here's all the things you're doing. Why don't you be preemptive in that? And it is, it's got to have a different narrative because you're not doing it the same way. It's got to have a different tone because you're doing it the opposite way that you've always done it before. He loved the idea, and he's going to. And I, I'll have an update maybe next week on how that went. Yeah, but, right. Um, <laughs> you know, but it, it does. It, you can see that, that we can put our tools of the law of attraction into play at the holidays. As a, it, it is really no more effective tool for any situation. But during this exact situation. What are you really seeking from the holidays? Is it, is it approval of everyone else? Is it making sure you're – I know a lady right now that's freaked out because there's a certain pair of shoes that she can't find for her son that are real popular right now. Mm. Wow. And she's, she's really stressed about that. And I'm, I'm like, wow, wow. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and she's, I know it's tough. I go, no, I'm not sorry you can't find the shoes. I'm sorry you're stressed about something like shoes. Yeah, right. <laughs> it, it's – you know, I said – I said – your holidays are here. This is a, cho- a chance of joy. Your family's together. Let's celebrate all this. And your focus is you can't find the, the kids getting a just a boatload of stuff, but this one pair of shoes you can't find, and that's what's causing you the stress. And when you put it that way, it's sort of ridiculous. But that's what she's doing. And yet, that's what well, we all do. Dis- that, I was just saying that's all. That's what we all do. We all do that. I mean, it's not just kids. Yes. It's just amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, and and that, that, it, I remember one time, and I can't imagine this how they – and this is condition. I was a little kid. I mean, I was like three or four. And uh, this will date me in age, but most of our audience will have no idea what I'm talking about. But there used to be a TV series called Lost in Space. Oh, yeah. And there was a, there was a robot on there. The hottest toy of the year was that robot. Right. Um, and that's all I wanted, a robot in an army man suit for Christmas. That's what I wanted. <laughs> I remember this clearly. And also, my neighbor had gotten this wind-up mouse that you wind up, you put on the ground, and it took off. I mm-hmm. thought that was hilarious. Okay. So I about five days before Christmas, I said, by the way, tell Santa I want this wind-up mouse. It's really important. <laughs> And my mom said, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah. I mean, I've taught nonstop as a child, and so I'm sure she did pick up on all of that. <laughs> um, and, and, and so the, the, the idea that she got me the robot. Christmas morning, I have photos to this day of me and the robot, me wearing my Army suit. Oh, that's funny. It, it's awesome, but I asked the question, where's the wind-up mouse? <laughs> Now, of all the things that I had, and, and, I, and I, I minimalized, I had much more stuff than the Army suit, and, but I remember that clearly, and, and that, that was the big stuff. But this 99 cent, and probably back then, probably 49 cent wind up mouse that was going to last two or three wind ups and break. Yeah, right. <laughs> all, all I could focus on was where was that Where's the mouse? mouse? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and it, it, a lot of it is conditioned a lot. And that was a child, so there was. It, it, it's just we are almost inviting with our scenario the lack. My my son Justin, who I've recently adopted, is an outstanding young man, and things are going incredibly well with our adoption and stuff. But we we live in a in a in a very nice home in a very nice neighborhood. And we have very nice cars. We have an incredible life. Well, our home is about twenty four hundred square foot for two people. That, that's I'm doing that is plenty that, that's, plenty of space. That's you a know? lot of space. Yes. Yes. So we're, we're driving the other day and we go by this house that's for sale and it's this, you know, probably a 6,000 square foot home. <laughs> oh, can we buy that house? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, no, why would we want that house? I said, that would, 
that's just more to clean. That's more space. To, and, and, and from my perspective, I, I didn't want, I, I have no desire for that. But yet his, he's looking, I said, what, and so we're working on the concept. What do you see in that? What does that represent to you that you wanted it? I, I don't view that as an asset. I view that as a liability. Yeah. That house. <laughs> um, it's too big. It's too much. Uh, and, but yet there's a side of him. And again, he's a child. I don't want to make him overthink everything, but there's a side of him that that's drawn to, you know, wow, I want that. When in reality, we have every single thing imaginable that a family could want. Mm. We, we have, we have, we have, we don't lack a thing. We, we, I'm in, I'm blessed to be in a situation that we won't lack a thing for the next whatever time, a period of time, we're fine. Right. And I look at that, I want to live in that, but also the, those expectations of, or those, those wants, those default thinking of I'm wanting just based on the concept of wanting. It creates that lack feeling that I keep referring to. And our big problem with the law of attraction, it, it, how it doesn't work for us is when we develop a feeling of lack, no matter what area, relationships or money or job, when you're living in that lack and the holidays can exacerbate that feeling, then is when we start to have the downward spirals. Oh, absolutely. That, that whole thing about lack is probably at the root of not just holiday stresses, but every other stress that we can think of. I mean, every stress you've ever run into in your, in your practice is going to be tied to yes. a feeling of lack. And, and it's, it's a feeling that most of us don't even identify it as lack until we get you know, presented with like an Abraham Hicks lecture that talks about the difference between, you know, having a thing and lacking a thing. And those are the two opposites. That's like, oh, yeah, I never really thought about that. So so most of the time, most of us don't even think about it. And yet lack becomes a major part of our personal dialogue and our dialogue with each other. It, it, if you look at what we talk about with our friends, our family, our coworkers, inevitably lack fits into it like a glove almost. And th oh. I, I, it ties in perfectly with what uh, Wendy and Tom and, and Cindy and I have been talking about uh, in other uh, podcasts this week, how important it is, like you said earlier, how important it is to change that dialogue, to change the internal dialogue, to change yeah. the dialogue with others and so forth. Um, in fact, you mentioned how you had the one client who was dreading uh, seeing the uncle over Christmas. And Wendy was telling kind of a similar story. Um, the gist of it is that... Uh, I guess one of the nieces is has either become engaged or is about to become engaged. I can't remember which. And uh, the intended is actually somebody that one of her brothers knows and has known for a number of years. And the brother is just not behaving well toward him. Uh, I'm not really sure why. I mean, Wendy wasn't really well, coming, forthcoming about why. But the point is that there was this, this dynamic going on. And it, it, it was almost inevitably going to lead to a situation because it had in the past where the brother was going to get his plate of food during dinner and go to another room because he didn't want to be in the same room as this guy, which is, you know, that, that's a heck of a way to welcome somebody into the family, right? <laughs> well, sure, sure. Yes. Well, she decided that she was going to change the narrative. So the way she's changing the narrative this year, she, she talked with a couple of other of her other siblings and said, you know, um, th this situation does happen, and I'm, I think we should kind of nip it in the bud. So let's let's focus on getting to know this new guy. Let's you know, because because we all have questions about him, we don't really know him, and you know, we'll probably probably be questioning him to death anyway. But let's focus on that, and let's do it um, proactively before our brother gets a chance to get his complaints in edgewise. And that's what they're going to do. They're, they're not even going to give him a, a chance to, to, to go his own way. He's going to, and he's probably going to take, she even described the, the, the setting and, and you know, the room that they, they have their dinner in and where he's likely to sit in the room. And she pointed out that if he does sit there, he won't be able to leave the room because you'll have 10 people in a room that's designed for six and there won't be any room for him to get out. So he's going to be in an interesting dilemma. Like, how do I leave the room when I can't get out? <laughs> but the exactly. point is, it, it, the point is that she was changing the whole dynamic by thinking about it differently. Yes. And she was she was yes. explaining how important it is to think differently about it and to change that dynamic. And it just fits in. I thought it, it fits in like a glove the way you're talking here. Well, and, and, and I love what Wendy was talking about. The, 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 the idea when you apply the same 
a technology or you apply the same thought pattern to the same problem and you keep re applying it over and over, if I keep trying to open a PDF file with a uh, something that won't open a PDF file, no matter how many times I hit that button, it's not going to open. <laughs> uh, it, it's just not going to do it. Uh, it, it. It'll just keep showing up blank. And it, until I download the software that'll open up the PDF file, it's not good. I got to do it differently. And and we have a tendency, and it's just what she's talking about, or what I'm talking about with this young man with his uncle coming home, let's change the narrative in the beginning. Meet him at the door, shake his hand, grab his bag, tell him what's going on before he has a chance to say a word. Give him a hug. <laughs> and and, and you, you will put him in such an entirely different place that – he's going to have to respond differently. And, and that, that, that piece is, you know, there's a gentleman, this is a really silly example, but I, I, there's a gentleman at the gym that I go to, one of the gyms I go to that I, I have seen for the last, I don't know, five or six years. And he's a very nice man, but what he says, I always make the comment, how are you doing? And he always says, I'm doing the best I can with what I got. Well, the first 387 times I heard that, I <laughs> chuckled. But for some reason, about 388 times, I was like, oh, really? Uh, so it was the same statement. So I now ask him a different question where that answer doesn't work. <laughs> and, he, and, and, and he has to come up with something different. He's so conditioned to say that that he doesn't know what to say sometimes. I'm curious. And, what's and what's so the you question get, you ask? I'm really curious to know what, what you're asking him that's different. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I will. I'll say something like, "You look fantastic." I think it, it seems life is going well for you. Oh, nice! I like that. You know, or, or you know, you, you know, say, "Hey, um, I saw your wife earlier today, uh, and she said things are great in your life." <laughs> and he, he he looks at you like, "Well, I, I don't get to say my punchline," and, yeah, and right. it's, it's just now that's an irrelevant thing. But but when I give something. You know, an answer that isn't anticipated, it requires a different sort of a, a, a new opening of the mind. One of the dialogues that I will often be in in my practice is, is you can envision, I want our audience to envision, imagine a mom and dad and a kid and me sitting in an office, right? And the mom and dad and the kid have been at battle now for the last six or seven years, and you know, whether over behavior, over drug use, or pot use, or whatever, the kid's now 22, and they've heard their, and every time the mom speaks, the kid rolls his eyes. Every time the dad, the kid speaks, the dad just looks away, folds his arms, you know, like, like we know what you're going to say. And so I'm sitting with this family saying, okay, here's what's going to happen. I'll tell them ahead of time. When the mom's going to talk, son, you're going to roll your eyes. When he talk, and I'm, I give them that narrative and, and say, because you're already anticipating what the other people are going to say, so you don't let their words get out of their mouth before you're shutting them off. And, and that's an anticipatory state of mind where you're destined to be, for the outcome to be the same, because no matter what they say, you are anticipating what they're saying, whether you're hearing them or not. And, and we do that on so many different levels, all of us. It's just not young people. It, but we, we are expecting, and again, that ex, the combination of expectation of lack, as you're talking about, lack is the underlying everything of the dark side, is what I like to call the law of attraction. Uh, not that there isn't a, a darker light as far as the law of attraction goes, but lack is what the law of attraction is. Do you want lack? <laughs> Let's deliver lack. <laughs> you know, you, you, you're you living in lack. We'll deliver all the lack you want, or we'll <laughs> deliver the abundance you want. My my life changed instantly, and I mean literally instantly, when I started looking at the abundance of things. And and that's when people can really plug in that. It, it's just shocking to see how, like, uh, the snap of a finger, it went, Wow. Okay, I, I, and nothing really changed, but the way I looked at things, it, I had never not been able to to meet my obligations. There were some months that was very close. There was some months, but I, I do, I've done that. That that isn't lack when you can when you can go five and six and ten years and meeting your obligations every month will never fail. That's not lacking anything. That's an abundance of stuff. 
no matter how close you make it, it's, it's the fact I pay my bills off every month. I've never been late on my mortgage payment. All those things are things that I remind myself of when I have that moment of doubt. You know, it, 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 I find it funny, Walt, that, that and, I, and this is part of the holiday stress. This this time of year, you know, first of all, I had this, all the adoption expenses, which is, again, grateful for all of this. Sure. Um, plus holiday expenses. And, you know, so the other day, I'm, I'm, as I'm spending money, spending money, spending money, I had that just old feeling of, I've, I've spent a lot of money this month. <laughs> and it, it was funny because I instantly said, but I have a lot of money to spend this month. That's great. And I changed it before I got into that, that negative view or that lack view of if I want to live in the fear of not having enough money, the law of attraction will deliver that. It doesn't care that it was fear or if, if it, I'm living in the excitement of abundance, it'll deliver that. Yeah, that's And so when true. I learned yeah. that, that's so exciting, the stress of the holidays, the financial stress. Now, that doesn't mean that I need to go spend crazy over my head without any regard to any. I don't need to go buy, you know, a matching Lamborghinis, right. um, you know, stuff like that. I don't need to go do that. That's, that's obviously ridiculous. But the fact that, you know, a, a, there's a, a, a young couple that, uh, uh, not not a couple of a, a couple of children that were last minute placed into foster care last last week. Uh, they were put into this home, and and this family's a really nice family, foster care family. They have but they weren't anticipating these kids. Uh, these kids weren't going to have a Christmas. So, and I'm not saying this in any form or fashion of of grandizing my my situation, but. I donated some money and I got some other people to donate some money and we quickly provided for this family, um, you know, make sure they'll have some Christmas. And, and, and I think that's just what humans do. But at that moment, I didn't feel like, Oh boy, I'm going to get below a certain amount of money or I, I really have spent all the money I need to spend. I gave without regard to that. Um, it, it is something that I, I, I don't want to, there's, of course I can donate that money. Of course I can help them have a good Christmas. And and I don't want to ever get back to that mindset where I'm living in that fear of lack in that area. Uh, and it, it's this holidays unintentionally because we have to live up to expectations of who's getting what or, or how much we're supposed to be spending. Then that then filters back into now I want to have a lack of money because of the holidays. And there, you know, there's just another area of it all. It's just, uh, it, it, there's a, I'm sure you've seen it on Facebook. I've seen it several times where in Norway, most holidays is you give each other a uh, Christmas, you give each other a book, right. That's it, a book. Okay. And, and you know, it, I think it's a good idea, you, but you buy the book for the person that really they relate to. It's something that's very, very personal. You buy them a book that relates to it. And then, you give it to them Christmas Eve and you family members sit around and, and in their pajamas and they read their book before they go to bed and they get up and they celebrate Christmas. That's pretty much Christmas. It's a wonderful Christmas. Well, it's, well, there's, there, it's not overblown. And, but here, again, we bigger, more, better. It's all great, but when you're viewing it from a position of lack or I'm giving, having to spend more than I am capable of doing, then all the stress comes up. And it's amazing how that's a direct conduit to this feeling that we're talking about. I love that example, or the, actually that series of, of examples you just gave, because they illustrate so nicely how what seems to be a conversation about stuff turns into a conversation about lack. And it, it yeah. shows just how easily we do that in our daily lives, let alone at the holidays. We just do that a lot normally. So yeah, that that was just I'm I'm listening to that uh, description. I'm thinking, wow, that that's like a poster child right there for understanding what lack is and how lack affects us. Because that's that's great. That's a great description. Well, yes. Well, and and, the, and we are we you know I again you know my reminding our audience that I since I'm not haven't been around a lot for a while now, I'm on probably about going on about a two year news blackout. Yeah, and uh, and I'm en I'm enjoying it, but you still can't help but pick up some news. Uh, it, it's just you know when I'm I'm at businesses they have uh, news on, so I try to ignore it. But there's news out there, and the the idea that so much of our society 
whether it's politics or or no matter really where everything is built on this uh, so much is built on on the opposite of what we're trying to build things on the the idea that that we're going to govern from a negative standpoint or we're going to to do these type things from a negative standpoint but they're motivating people by a fear of lack in the future the government sales that's where people get into stuck into things is is you and I, I made a brief statement to you about the for those that are following the bitcoin phenomenon right now of how it's gone just crazy uh you know it's, it's, it's just got a, an incredible amount of uh growth in the last few months mm -hmm. and it's getting a lot of national attention and i know a lot of people that are are jumping on that and it's great and i've watched this one young man at the gym he told me he bought one of the cryptocurrencies it wasn't bitcoin there's other ones right and he said oh joe i have tripled my money in the last three weeks and i said well that's great i'm really happy for you i said uh, uh he said well i'm, I'm going to go take out a loan and buy more oh dear and i said well I said, well, if you're if you're asking me for my advice, I make sure you are. Yeah, right. Uh, because I'm not going to give it if you don't want it. Uh, but I said that I'm, I'm glad you tripled your money, but that's not an indicator that's going to keep going. It's impossible for it to keep going up. At some point, it'll have to backtrack, and somebody will have bought at the high point of Bitcoin. Somebody would have bought at the high point, and they're guaranteed to lose. So. I'm not saying they're at the high point. I'm just saying be cautious and and live. But and he turned his he said, well, Joe, I thought you were about abundance. I'm going to go, yes, I'm about abundance, but not approaching it from a state of fear. When you're borrowing money and I'm going to go win this, you're actually telling the universe, I'm going to dictate how I'm going to get this. And I, I say, keep your, your current investment. But let's see where it goes, or or maybe in, and add to it little bits. But borrowing money probably is not the best way to do it. Now he didn't heed my advice, and he went and borrowed five thousand dollars. He put it in, and we'll see where that goes. But you you live in a place. I live in a place where we have been governed. A lot of us, and I'm I'm only speaking in a negative sense, but but I can speak for me. For a long time, I reacted out of a fear of lack the lack you know the lack of comfort a lack of a you know you know I, I talk often about how i had to redefine words and meetings in my life uh you know failure to, when joel used i got a big shirt that i have printed that says failure on the back mm. and and people are looking at me going, that's sort of negative and then in smaller words i got the ultimate tool <laughs> and uh I, I i thrive i don't view failure as a negative failure means i'm trying i'm excited about failure struggle means i'm getting stronger and, and when you redefine those words you're in charge of that that doesn't work for everyone other people aren't going to get around that the way i do it but i i i can thrive on that because it's all how you're positioning yourself to do it the the the, the lack is lack is the opposite of abundance and the, the the law of attraction will fulfill either with an unemotional approach. It doesn't care. It's just what you're putting out there. And that's what we're – the holidays, as you said, I love what you said. This, the, this takes place year-round. All the holidays does is puts a magnifying glass on it. Right. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. It makes sense. Yeah. In fact, uh, yeah. The, the example you gave of the, the Bitcoin investor, the, the cryptocurrency investor – it, it reminded me of a couple of things. First was he was so excited about, you know, how it had tripled in value and so forth. But he had never indicated any way that he was going to cash in on his win. He was just going to keep riding yeah. it and, and, you know, with the assumption that it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger, which is really, like you said, it's a, a position of lack. The way I would express it is he is afraid that if he doesn't stay in, he's going to miss out on more growth. And, exactly. And that fear is actually going to work against them. But on top yes. of that, if you don't cash in on it, you never realize it. You never actually realize the gain if you don't cash it in. And that's the part exactly. that investors forget about. You have to cash it in. And, and you may miss out on another big run up. But so what? That's focusing on the lack, well, focusing on the benefit right. of you just had a tripling of your money. That's a win. 
And that's a win that that stays with you. It, it works its way into your subconscious mind. It works its way into your conversations. You actually end up ahead because you actually put the profit into your bank account. Yes. And that, and that's that's what happens when when you look at it, if you're doing it, if this young man were to cash out and, and, and take the profit and, and not look at what you potentially lose going forward, but I just profited. I have an abundance. I, I did. That's the way to look at it. Right. And, and, and it, not just literally cashing out, but when we start looking at figuratively cashing out in, in life as far as the abundance of where we're at, it's so easy to get stuck on that next step. What do I want next? The sort of like Justin the other day, my son saying, we need, I would love that bigger house. Let's, and let's look at what we have. Let's keep our focus on, we have no lack in our life. We have an abundance of everything. We have, you know, our, our bearded dragon has more stuff than most people. I mean, it's amazing that we, you know, we, 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 I have a lizard that is, has his own tablet to watch videos to keep him busy during the day. I mean, that's, that's amazing. We live in a world that we're streaming videos of wildlife for my lizard to watch. So he's not bored. Um, so, who lives in that world? And, and so I'm, I'm excited about, about what we have. Or I can say, oh, we don't have that. Or we don't have that. And, and that, that's where it comes. So the holidays take that further. And then, the, and then we have to, there's, a, there's a sort of another piece to all of this that you, you we've, we've talked about social, we've lightly touched on social media, but when you're watching social media, and I use social media basically as a business tool, very seldom will I stray from nothing but positive stuff. And if I find myself straying into in other areas, I delete it. Um, but I, as I move forward with social media, I have to be careful not to get caught up in people's projection of their lives on social media. Mm. Their life is perfect. It's perfect. And, and I'm like, oh, wow. If I measure my life by their social media presence, my life may be lacking. That's an important piece. And it's true. We a do, lot of people we do tend to compare. And, and when we compare to somebody else, we, it's not like we ever compare to somebody who's in a lower position. It's always to somebody in a higher position, isn't it? Absolutely. And because it, it, it perceives that that idea that you know somehow we're being cheated or we're, we're missing out on. When I was going through my early part of recovery and I was struggling incredibly, I mean, on a, on a level that I can't, I, I'll actually even, I logically remember, but I cannot emotionally touch where I was back then, where every day was, was just a struggle to survive. And I was, I remember thinking, I actually had this thought, I would trade places with anybody on the planet. I remember thinking that multiple times. Nobody has it as bad as me. I will do would do anything but be in my position. And all these years later, and I mean this sincerely, there is no one that I would trade places with ever right at this point. Nobody. There's nobody's life that I would rather have than my life. And that's a massive change in attitude. And it because it took place where I just viewed everybody had it better than I did. Every I was the victim of all, and I view it now like no one has it better than me from my perspective. I love my life. I love everything that's taken place. Even back then was a necessary journey to get right now. Which you is know, a, it's which, just great, Walt. Oh, it's a phenomenal way to to look at things, and, and a way we all should probably spend more time doing because no matter what our circumstances are. There is always a way to say to yourself, I am doing great. I'm doing great. Yes. And not, not, not like your, uh, your, your uh, associate at the gym who says, I'm doing the best I can with what I got. I'm doing great. Yeah. Yeah. Because and you... and that, that's absolutely something that, you know, that, that you're in a, you're living it in a life daily where you get up and you're, you know, you we're almost going through the motions sometimes. And when you get stuck in going through the motions, you're, you're stuck in the, the grind of it all versus celebrating the grind. I get up, uh, I was, uh, 
I posted on Facebook. You probably saw it. Um, we were taking one of Justin's friends home the other day from he was visiting and uh, really nice kid, great kid. And he asked me, he said, do you have to work during the holidays like a normal kid? Because he was going to want to hang out more. Mm-hmm. And before I could answer, Justin's response was, no, he gets to work. During oh. the <laughs> Good going, Justin. <laughs> and and because he's heard me say that, because he's like, oh, you got to work today. No, no, son, I get to work today. It, and it sounds so incred- incredibly silly that I am in that mindset of uh, that, that's so important to me. But that little word makes all the difference. Have to and get to is just worlds apart one is an abundance it's a privilege the other is a you're working from a lack i'm having to go grind away from a lack and that's that's really if you look at the finest points of the law of attraction it's the pivot point from lack to abundance of of where it all begins Mm -hmm. well we've talked here about how when we're focusing on somebody else's accomplishments we usually focus on somebody who's further up the scale than we are we're comparing against that wouldn't it be interesting if instead of doing that we focused on wow he's doing a better job of appreciating where he is than i am i i could do that i could get myself into that position what a completely different dialogue that would be especially a self-dialogue yeah and and that uh, that's the stuff that i'm i'm that's the stuff I sell, so to speak. That, that's the concepts that I'm tell, I, I try to get across to people of here we are. Let, we're living. You got, you're given this life. You're going to go through this life, and if you go through every day viewing that everything is lacking. I, I have a really good friend. And he's come so far, and, and he may be on the show here in a few weeks. He's really coming around in a lot of ways. But he had a very difficult childhood, and I won't get any deeper than that. But it's one of the more and, – and coming from me, this statement is strong. It's one of the more difficult childhoods that I've ever seen, um, and I've seen a lot. So You've lived a lot. So he, yeah. <laughs> I've lived a lot, yeah. And, and as, he, as he was uh, um, talking about things, he, everything's a conspiracy theory. Everybody's out to get him. Uh, and, and if you look at the evidence of his life, that there's a part of his life that, that you know, probably matches that is, is relatively accurate. But into adulthood, his training of everybody's out to get me. And so every scenario he encounters is a battle. If his paycheck, his paycheck's always late, uh, they always underpay him. They, and, and the more he complains, the more they, they, you know, they then pick on him. Then he gets hurt at work. Then there's a conspiracy theory to keep him from getting medical care. And it's just this on and on scenario that it, it's like this chain of events took place that he, he couldn't control. And so what we've done is work through all of this, and we now are looking at it from a different way. We're, we're like moving forward. I don't want you to keep rehashing or replaying the past. Moving forward, here we are. Look at the abundance in your life. You have beautiful children. Your wife loves you. You have a, a, you know, you got your, we go through the list of it. And he slowly started to change it. And shockingly, fewer and fewer conspiracies are taking place against him. Well, that's good. Because it's matching. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a big shift it, for it, somebody who's been in a place where they are constantly seeing conspiracies. To have the conspiracy seem to melt away, that's, that's pretty big. Yes. And, and that, that, that's, the, that's the idea that I, I want to, uh, you know, I'm, we're trying to get across to people of, of you, you don't see how much we play into this. Or uh, I share, shared a story on one of the shows a, a while back in, in, in my book, The Bench. Um, I think I talk about this. It's not it's going to be in my second book, but uh, that was a secret plug of the bench, by the way. Yes, I, I hear that. Yes, it, but, it's, uh, a, it's a worthwhile <laughs> plug. I want to encourage people do get the book. It is a it's a read that has affected many many people in some marvelous ways, and and for evidence of it, just go play some of the old episodes that Joel and I did together because there are a number of stories in there. I'm, I'm thinking of one in particular about the guy from Canada. Who ha- people who have been dramatically impacted by that book? So there's another plug for you, Joel. Well, thank you. And uh, we, 
there's there's a lady that in the middle of my addiction that I met, Walt, and and um, and, and without getting into all the the the, the details of it, it, there was a I'd spent time with her, and, and I was uh, I had taken advantage of her kindness and in, in my addiction, and I. I'd taken money that didn't belong to me. It was called stealing. And, and I, <laughs> um, when I got in recovery, I realized, boy, I'd taken money from this lady. So part of my, my journey of my recovery has been to repay people uh, over the years. So when I was at that stage, I, I started to go look for her. And I ha- actually hired a private detective. And this is before Facebook was really big and easy to do. And I, and I couldn't find her. Her name had changed and all in a, to a different marriage. Well, one of the standout pieces of this lady, I, I, she was very kind to me, but she was possibly the most negative person I'd ever met. I mean, every she was the victim of everything. And of mm. course, I then stole money from her and then made her more of a victim of it all. And I was wrong. Um, and and I, I remember that. And I said, you know, I really owe this lady an apology. So as years passed and Facebook became more popular, I remembered her son's name. He was a small child back then. I remembered her son's name. Mm -hmm. So I looked him up, found her, and then found her first name. So Mm -hmm. obviously I I was either fine. So I was able to track her down with her new name. And I was about to message her on Facebook and and just be prepared for her to blow me away with how bad I was. And and, and she had a right to do all that. But Walt, I read her post, and 20 years had passed, and she was the same person. She was on Facebook. She was complaining about everybody. She still had the same health problems. Uh, her third husband at that point, uh, it was cheating on her and telling her all these bad things. Everybody was disappointing her. And there was not a post of anything good. Mm. Everything was 100% negative. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Mm. Wow. I mean, 20 years, uh, nothing had changed for her in 20 years. And my life is incredibly different in 20 years. Um, so I did, I did through, you can go through tax records and stuff like that. And I found her ad- address and I sent her a, um, you know, I sent her quite a bit of money, much more than I took anonymously and just uh, sent it to her only because I didn't want to draw that back. Not that I didn't want to take what was coming to me from her, but I, I didn't want to be attached to that negative personality. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I made an amends and I, I, I watched over over time, and, and I was able to track with uh, the the cashier's check. The bank lady told me when it, it cashed. Never mentioned it on Facebook. If somebody randomly sent me a thousand dollars on, I, I'm going to mention that. You know, think, wow, I got a surprise today. Maybe not the, the amount of money, but you know, I got a surprise today. And no, I think it's just the day she cashed it, it was a very negative day for her. Mm. Um, and. I'm not being critical of her. I'm using that example of how we, this is what we do. Oh yeah. And I, I, I love when people can identify and make that one pivot of I'm going to spend, you know, you, you hear one of the statements I've often said is you, you know, go a day without complaining and see your life will be different. Well, that's true, but really go a day, not just without complaining, but truly living with the, gratitude and the abundance and the the humor of all of this i mean we're we're that life is actually a very exciting it's very uh it's very fun there's there's great things happening and there's crazy things happening where i choose to focus is what's going to continue to bring, come back in my life and and that's where the holidays take they tend to just like magnify that but also you can magnify it during the during the holidays in the opposite way as well look at the the great things that are happening i i i'm i'm in a position to provide a home to my son who didn't have a home before we we have uh, again we he's getting just a ridiculous amount when our bearded dragon has more than most people we we're in a great position uh, all of these things are just an amazing thing that i want to focus on so the holidays can can magnify that as well. Let it magnify the abundance of your life, and not just stuff. The abundance of 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 just life, the excitement of it all. My, I'm in incredible health. I feel wonderful. Uh, all of those are are themes that are anti stress factors. Stress and anxiety has one great antidote, and it's action. And when you're 
where they get compounded is when you stress and ha- when you have stress and anxiety over things you can't control, there are no actions you can take to put stress out. When you when your stress and anxiety is over things you do have control over, you then can apply action which relieves stress. That, those that, are those are some basic tools. That's quite a cautionary tale to the the tale of that woman who uh, you returned the money to and then some and and she didn't even react to it. Because, like you say, 20 years later, her behavior pattern hadn't changed. Boy, that, that's a reminder to anyone who, has, who finds themselves in that kind of a pattern. You want to get out of it. Because if you don't, 20 years later, you're still in the same pattern. The, the sooner that you change that, the better. Because who wants to, if, if you're feeling miserable right now, who wants to look forward 20 years down the, ri- down the road and realize you're going to feel that same level of misery every day, 365 days a year for 20 years when you can yeah. easily just turn yeah. it around. You can turn it around. I mean, I, sh- I shouldn't say easily. If, you, if you're in a pattern like that, it can take a little bit. It can take quite a bit of work to turn it around and change your, your thought pattern. It takes a while to reverse the momentum sometimes, but it's still so worthwhile because you're not setting yourself up for 20 years of misery. You're setting yourself up for 20 years of, wow, good things. Good things happening, joy even, happiness. Oh my goodness, like satisfied life. What's that? Exactly, Walt. And that that's the piece for me that 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 when I discovered that and I see and I try to bring to people's attention when I I'm I'm I've had an, an interesting group of clientele that over the last few months has sort of added themselves to my practice and I I, I didn't really know I was attracting them, but I did. Uh and I have like four or five CEOs right now that I'm working <laughs> with. And these are people that abundance has a, it, it, it's sort of the opposite. Money is not even a discussion of abundance. Money's not even a thing. It's, it's whatever. It mm-hmm. doesn't mean anything to them. They have so much of it. They make plenty of money. They don't worry about it. That's not what their thing is. What the interesting thing is, is their areas of lack our relationships with their kids, their uh, their inability not you know the, the the lack of emotional stability as one person described, and they they use uh, substances to stabilize their emotion versus mm. being able to do it. So the idea that this group of people who by all means have an abundance of what most people try to use the law of attraction for, they're they're using the law of attractions to fill in the other blanks in their lives, right. and that's such a, a when you realize that it's all the same thing, that's what that's what gets exciting. Yeah. It really does. Because now you know that there is, it's it's a way out that can be helpful for anyone, no matter what their circumstance, and that everyone really needs it. Because as you say, right. just because you achieve success financially doesn't mean you achieve success in other areas of your life. In fact, I think the studies show that with people who look for happiness after success, they get there about 10% of the time. Whereas people who decide to start with happiness and measure how many of those come up with success as a result of the happiness, that's closer to 90% of the time. I mean, the, the statistics yeah. are just startling in terms of how dramatically different they are. And so, you know, here we have well, examples that show, well, here, yeah, it really does work that way. Yes. And, and that, that's the, uh... That that really you know for the holidays especially, but I, I I love this idea when you know we have a new year coming up, and while that means absolutely nothing, it can be an opportunity, at least a a starting point, to say you know I, I'm I'm not going to live next year with a, a lack. I'm not going to start the year with a lack. If I, you know, the, my same brain cells that I lived with you know seven years ago. They're gone. I have new brain cells now. <laughs> they're, they're, the body regenerates. There's new stuff in the body. So any old thoughts or behavior that I'm choosing to keep those, it's those are there because I just have decided to reload them. So I can reload the good stuff or I can reload the bad stuff. And and there's a new year coming and there's a new opportunity for our, our, our audience and, and you and I both, Walt. This is the year of opportunity. This is the year that can happen. It's coming up. And let's look forward to that. Let's try it. Let's live in it. Well, as usual, we have used up our hour faster than we expected, but that's par for the course with us. Joel, it's been a pleasure as usual. Walt, I, I can't believe an hour's gone by. I hope you have a wonderful holiday. 
uh, you know, Christmas is a great time of year if you allow it to be. It's so good to talk to you, my friend. So good to talk to you, too. Merry Christmas as well to you. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.